Welcome to chemistry classes. In this video, we are going to study here atoms and molecules. Atoms and molecules. CBSE grade 9 chapter 3. Atoms and molecules. Okay, here atoms. We know atoms are the smallest part of any matter. We know there are different states of matter, solid state, liquid state and a gaseous state all matter all matter made up of extremely smallest part and this smallest part is called the atoms okay so atoms are indivisible indivisible part of matter okay so you can say atoms are the smallest part of matter or atoms are indivisible part indivisible part of matter okay here in this video we have to discuss here uh, two important laws in chemistry okay here we have to discuss here laws of chemical combination laws of chemical combination here this law of chemical combination introduced by uh, Antoine L. Lavoisier Antoine L. Lavoisier introduced or established two important laws these two laws together called law of chemical combination law of chemical combination there are two laws in chemistry or there are two laws we have to study in this video these two laws together we will say law of chemical combination this law of chemical combination established by Antoine L. Lavoisier together with Joseph L. Proust these two scientists together established law of chemical combination Antoine L. Lavoisier and Joseph L. Proust okay so here we discuss law of chemical combination law of chemical combination we discuss law of chemical combination is a combination of two laws here first one law of conservation of mass so here we have to discuss here law of law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass it is related to mass okay its name uh, indicate mass it's something related to mass law of conservation of mass okay so according to law of conservation of mass here it is i told you it is related to mass okay so it is related to changing mass of reactant and product during chemical reaction okay changing mass of reactant and product during a chemical reaction that is law of law of conservation of mass and see here we can we can explain law of conservation of mass uh, based on activity 3.1 in your textbook you can see one activity activity 3.1 based on this activity we can explain law of conservation of mass okay so see here based on this activity we have to take a pair of chemicals we have many chemicals here okay and see here here copper sulfate solution sodium carbonate solution this is one pair of chemicals we have to choose one of this pair okay here copper sulfate solution and sodium carbonate solution barium chloride solution sodium sulfate sodium sulfate solution lead nitrate solution and sodium chloride solution so for our activity we can choose one of this chemical one of this one of this pair we have to choose one of one of the pair of solution okay you can choose copper sulfate and sodium carbonate or barium chloride and sodium sulfate lead nitrate and sodium chloride which type of chemicals available in our chemical laboratory based on this we have to choose one of one of the pair of these chemicals okay and here these are the activity we have to do here okay so we have to choose one of this pair okay for example copper sulfate and sodium carbonate copper sulfate and sodium carbonate then we have to make five percentage solution 
we have to make 5 percentage solution of copper sulfate and 5 percentage of sodium carbonate solution in separate container okay these are two different chemicals so we have to make two different solution in two different container okay and we have to choose we have to choose conical flask and test tube for this experiment conical flask conical flask uh, you can see here conical flask and test tube okay this type of apparatus we have to select for our activity okay and here we have to take one of the chemical in conical flask and another chemical in test tube for example we have to take copper sulfate solution in in a conical flask and sodium carbonate solution in test tube okay this is in conical flask and this is in test tube clear and we have to arrange our apparatus with chemicals as shown in this figure we have to arrange it okay after arranging like this we have to we have to measure its mass we have to measure its mass okay and uh, note this mass m1 what is m1 m1 mean uh, we made two separate solution of one of this pair for example we made five percentage of copper sulfate solution and five percentage of sodium carbonate solution okay and we have to take uh, we have to take uh, this solution in test tube and conical flask for example we have to take uh, copper sulfate solution in conical flask and sodium carbonate solution in test tube okay then we have to arrange we have to arrange this apparatus as shown the figure okay then measure this mass okay and this is m1 mass of beaker and test tube with solution the solutions are not mixed okay and here this is the mass clear after that after measuring its mass you have to tilt this apparatus and allow to mix both chemicals together you just tilt the test tube okay and after tilt this two chemicals two chemicals mean uh, copper sulfate solution in conical flask and sodium carbonate solution in test tube both will be mixed together after mixing together there will be a chemical reaction after after chemical reaction after few minutes you have to measure its mass after mixing after mixing this together there will be chemical reaction after chemical reaction we have to measure its mass again that is m2 okay m1 mean mass before chemical reaction m2 mass after chemical reaction so you can observe here during this experiment you can observe here m1 will be equal to m2 okay m1 equal to m2 so what what is the meaning of this here mass of reactant mass of copper sulfate and sodium carbonate solution before chemical reaction and after chemical reaction same mass of reactant and mass of product same there is no change this is this is law of conservation of mass so according to law of conservation of mass mass can neither be created nor been destroyed mass can neither be created nor been destroyed we cannot create mass we cannot destroy mass okay that is law of conservation of mass we cannot create something mass from here in the here here something air from air we cannot make something we cannot make copper or sulfur from air or you have some copper in your hand you cannot disappear it you cannot destroy this you understand so you cannot create you cannot destroy something matter okay so that is law of conservation of mass mass can neither be created nor be destroyed 
okay so also here one more point you have to remember during this chemical reaction you have to keep a cork on the mouth of the flask we we uh, you can see in the figure this is conical flask okay so in conical flask during the experiment you have to close this conical flask with a cork why why you have to you have to keep a cork on the mouth of flask because during chemical reaction there is possibility to form some gaseous gaseous product okay gas will escape outside okay if there is gas is matter if it escape outside there will be there will be uh, decreasing mass okay if if something escaping outside so this law is not valuable so you have to keep a cork on the mouth of flask to prevent escaping of gas clear okay next one we have to understand here law of constant proportion law of constant proportion we discuss law of combination law of combination first one we discuss law of conservation of mass second one law of definite proportion lavoisier with some other scientists they observed that many compounds consist of two or more different type of elements in a fixed ratio lavoisier along with some scientists observed that many compounds many compounds such as water uh, ammonia hydrogen chloride this type of compounds which contain two or more different type of elements two elements okay two different elements or more than two different elements okay these elements are in fixed ratio okay and uh, this type of observation here example for this see here water water which contain water it contain hydrogen and oxygen we know water there is two different type of elements hydrogen and oxygen okay the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen by mass okay here 2 and 16 we know we know relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16 relative atomic mass of hydrogen 1 relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16 you can observe this type of mass from periodic table okay also we will discuss this type of relative atomic mass in this chapter clear so see here so here mass of hydrogen 1 okay here it's 2 2 hydrogen so here mass of hydrogen 2 and here oxygen 16 so the ratio of mass of hydrogen and oxygen 2 is to 16 2 is to 16 you can simplify this okay so when you simplify this to 16 you can simplify so it will be 1 is 2 so this is the mass ratio of mass ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in in water okay you know you know there are different source of water water the source of water water obtained from uh, rain rain water okay uh, pond water river water sea water so we have different type of source for water also also you can you can make water after reacting hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen and oxygen reacted together water will be formed so there are different sources of water okay river water rain water sea water water obtained by chemical reaction whatever source it does not depends okay uh, when you take different samples of water from different source you can see you can see all source of water it it contain two hydrogen and one oxygen the mass ratio of water from different sample it contain it contain mass ratio 1 is to 2 okay so the ratio of different atoms in a compound does not depends how the water formed or what is the source it independent the source and method of preparation of chemicals okay when you take water from different sample or different source 
always it contain always it contain 1 is to 2 the mass ratio of hydrogen and oxygen always 1 is to 2 okay similarly you have a sample of water after decomposition you can use any chemical method okay after chemical method you you decompose decompose mean water after after suitable method it, you can change to hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen and oxygen okay this 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 is called decomposition decomposition mean here decompose break down water molecule break down and form hydrogen and oxygen separately this process is called decomposition so after decomposition of water always you will obtain one gram hydrogen and eight gram oxygen okay so it indicate that always a compound contain fixed ratio always the compound contain its elements always fixed ratio okay it do not change depends on the source how it method how it prepared okay so the ratio always fixed see here another example here when you choose ammonia 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 always contain the ratio of nitrogen and hydrogen always 14 is to 3 okay ammonia it contain always 14 gram uh, 14 gram nitrogen and 3 gram hydrogen always it do not change clear this type of observation helps to generate helps to establish a new law law of constant proportion law of constant proportion also called law of definitive proportion okay so here we discuss labos here with some scientists they observed that uh, many compounds it contain two or more different type of elements in a fixed ratio and this this fixed ratio it does not depends how the compounds are formed what are the sources of compound independent okay and this type of study helps to generate helps to establish new law law of constant proportion law of constant proportion also called law of definitive proportion clear so here this is law of definitive proportion it state that in a chemical substance the elements always present in definitive proportion when you take a chemical substance its elements are always definitive proportion okay so here you can state like law of constant proportion or law of definitive proportion state that in a chemical substance the elements are always definitive proportion in a chemical substance the elements are always definitive proportion clear next one we have to discuss here dalton's atomic theory dalton's atomic theory british chemist john dalton established dalton's atomic theory dalton's atomic theory based on law of chemical combination we discuss law of chemical combination okay so dalton's atomic theory based on uh, law of chemical combination dalton's atomic theory helps to explain helps helps to explain law of conservation of mass and law of definitive proportion clear okay next one we have to discuss here postulates of dalton's atomic theory postulates different points in in dalton's atomic theory okay so see here according to dalton's atomic theory all matter made up of extremely smallest part ex extremely smallest particle and this smallest particle called atom according to dalton's atomic theory all matter made up of very tiny particle this tiny particle called atom okay and here atoms are identical atoms are indivisible okay atoms are indivisible and it cannot create or destroy during chemical reaction the first point we discuss atoms are very tiny particles and here matter is made up of very tiny particle called atom and the second point 
here uh, atoms are indivisible atoms cannot break again it is indivisible and it cannot create or destroy during chemical reaction okay here third point here atoms of a given element are identical atoms of a given element identical in mass and the chemical property when you take one gold bar imagine this is gold bar it contains many atoms and all atoms are in identical in size and all of them have same chemical properties okay and here next point here atoms of different elements are different in their size and their chemical property so here these two points are uh, similar atoms of uh, atoms of a given element atoms of a given element are same in their size and chemical property here next point atoms of different elements are different in their mass and their chemical property okay so when you take one gold and one silver their atoms are different in their their size and their chemical property when you take different atoms of a different atoms of gold okay you have different atoms both are gold atom so they have same size and they have same chemical property clear and here atoms combined in in, in the ratio of small whole number atoms will combine in small whole number whole number ratio then they form compound for example here here look here hydrogen and oxygen they will they will combine in the ratio 2 is to 1 simple whole number ratio okay then form a compound that is water h2o okay so water is a compound in water hydrogen and oxygen they will combine in small whole number ratio small whole number ratio 2 is to 1 okay that is the point saying here atoms combine in the in the ratio of small whole number to form a compound clear here last point here the relative number and kinds of atom in a compound always constant the relative number and kinds of atoms are constant in a given compound i told you before you can take water from different source rain water river water or water obtained by chemical reaction between oxygen and hydrogen you have different samples of water but all water sample or wo all water compound contain same number of hydrogen and oxygen also also same kind of atoms okay all water sample contain same number of atoms same kind of atoms okay so you can check here these are the postulates of postulates of uh, dalton's atomic theory here we discuss all matter made up of tiny particles called atoms atoms are indivisible particle it cannot create or destroy during chemical reaction okay atoms of a given element identical in mass and chemical property atoms of different elements are different in their mass and chemical property okay and atoms combine in in the ratio of small whole number to form compound and the relative the relative number and the kinds of atom in a compound always constant okay so this is dalton's atomic theory okay so you can check the video once again you can review the points once again okay so these are the things we had to discuss in this video you can watch next video for further information so thank you